song on this morning. And so we're asking that you would pray for her as she come, as God will have her come and lead us in worship on this morning. And uh, she, um, she is just, um, God is just doing some amazing things with her. She's um, taking some music lessons and all of that. So I just see some great things in the horizon for her. So at this time, come on, let's show some love to Sister Soraya Guillory as she come and worship. Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. Snow wall, you won't be down. Light, you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. Yeah. 
Amen. Come on, let's give her another hand praise. Amen. It's never easy to get up in front of people to, to do things, especially when you are not always accustomed to doing it. So it take it took some um, some courage for her to get up here to sing. And so for that by itself, it, 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 it deserves an applause because she got up to do that. Amen. I'm encouraging her. Uh, uh, we, we are encouraging her to use her gift, exercise her gift. And um, I'm one that know, and I think all of us can vouch for this, that if you don't use your gift, it'll lie dormant. I won't say you'll lose your gift because the Bible says that all the gifts and callings are without repentance. So that means that God does not take back what he give you. But if you don't use what he give you, it'll lie dormant. And so you want, you want to use what God has given you. God has gifted people to write music. He's gifted people to sing music. He's gifted people to play music. And so uh, I'm encouraging. And some, and some people, they're gifted to have all of that. They can write music. They can sing it. They can play it. Amen. And so we are, we're, we're believing God for her to use her gift even more as time goes by. And I can tell you, Sarai, the more you use it, the easier it'll be for you to get up and bless God. But we thank God uh, this morning. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you and we honor you and we love you this morning because you are our Father. You are God. And beside you, there's no other. We love you and we are, you are majestic and you're mighty in all of your ways. Hallelujah. We thank you for this current season that we're currently in right now. We thank you for these months of acceleration, God, that you are moving by leaps and bounds in this season, God. We thank you for the outpouring of your glory and the outpouring of your reign in the house right now so consistent in this moment God we just thank you that every eye that is open every ear that is open every heart that is open we receive what you are releasing in this setting God in this gathering we thank you for those that are joining us uh, through our live stream the live stream uh, community we pray your blessings upon them right where they are God and that they will have an encounter with you hallelujah it is our prayer that they have an encounter with you and that the word that goes forth would never as you said it never returns to you void but it always accomplished the assignment and the task that in which it was sent out to accomplish and so god we dare not get in your way on today holy spirit we get out of the way so that you can move and direct us as you see fit hallelujah we thank you for the glory and uh the glory that is in the room and we thank you for the anointing that is upon this ministry right now and the oil that is flowing right now. And while the service is going, God, and while the service is progressing, we thank you for your healing virtue that is in the house. Somebody's being healed. Somebody's being delivered. Somebody's being set free while the word is going forth, God, because your word brings healing. Your word brings deliverance. Your word brings provision. Your word brings transition. Your word Words bring transgression, God. You, you, well, you, your word brings all the things that we need in this, in this moment, in this season, God. Your word brings transformation. And so, God, we're asking for to be transformed by the renewing of our minds this morning, God. And that our, uh, our eyes will be enlightened by your word and by revelation on this morning, God. We come against every demonic force. That comes to hinder what you what you desire to do in this room on this morning, God. And so, Father, when it's all said and done, we take no credit, but we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Uh, I want you to just in the moment right now, I want you to touch the top of your head. And I want you to say this. Say, Lord, give me the thoughts that you want me to think on today. Open my mind that I may receive the downloads for this service come on touch your eyes hey lord open my eyes that i can see what you want me to see on today touch your ears open my ears oh lord that i may hear you and hear what you want me to hear on today hallelujah we thank you lord 
for this encounter. We desire an encounter today. It is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. That's it. Come on, give God some praise in the house on this morning. It is what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord on this morning. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. So we thank God that today we're not coming for uh, repetition on today. We're not coming for um, 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 just, uh, just a, a, a spiritual routine, but we're coming for an encounter on today. And so we thank God for all of you that are here. We thank God for our leadership in the house. Thank God for uh, Pastor Raymond Smith Sr., our assistant pastor here at Glory Gatherings Ministries. Uh, thank God for him. Uh, powerful word on last Sunday. We thank God for God allowing him to fill in while we were on vacation on last week. We're grateful for his wife on today. Amen. Sister Cheryl Smith, we're so thankful for her. Uh, grateful for my wife. Uh, we thank God we celebrated uh, 19 years of marriage on this past week. And God is so good. Amen. And it's a blessing to be able to stand here and say that. And so I'm looking forward to doing many, many, many more years uh, with her. Amen. So we thank God. We uh, went on vacation on last week and had a wonderful time. Um, needed it, and I encourage anyone that need that have not gone on vacation, take you take you some vacations. You need them, uh, just so you can reset and 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 um, just get some get some um, some fresh energy. Amen. I think all of us need some fresh energy. Amen. Uh, you just work better. You work better when you when you're rejuvenated. Your mind is 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 uh is at rest. Physically, your mind is at rest. You think better. You think better, you do better, you, you just, you're just in a better, better position. So we have to take care of ourselves uh, on every level, not just on a spiritual level. Y'all hear me say that often, not just from a spiritual level, but on every level we need to take care of ourselves. Amen. I'm grateful for our young people on today. Thank God for my, my three beautiful children. Uh, we're so grateful for them, uh, and I enjoy my children. Um, and, and I enjoy my children. And I'm enjoying my time. I'm learning to enjoy my time with my children because I know before long they're going to be all out of the house. And it's not going to take long because I can remember just holding them in the hospital not many years ago. And so before I know it, they'll be all out of the house. I think, uh, I think uh, Pastor Smith and Sister Smith can attest to that, right? They'll be out of the house before I know it. Sister Lois can attest to that. Brother Terry can attest to that. Uh, so I just thank God for all of you for uh i thank god for my children on this morning and um the young people yesterday y'all went out and uh they were they were out they played kickball on yesterday had fun yesterday i'm not gonna get into who won but i think they know who won and who didn't win but i'm gonna leave it at that but they enjoyed they enjoyed they enjoyed the fellowship so um i thank god for sister pam um uh, providence pamela and uh, Sister uh, Lady T working together, and all of those, Sister Sharon was out there, and all of those, uh, Brother Kelvin, all of y'all that work with the youth, thank y'all so much. And of course, on, on, on Fridays, we have a 12 noon prayer for the young people at 12 noon. So, and it's not just for um, Glory Gatherings Ministries, it's for uh, the young people all over. So if you know a young person, um, that you feel on, led to send that call information. It's the same call information that we use for the morning manor call. Um, get the young people on the 12 noon call. Uh, and it's not, it's not long at all, just something they wanna pray and cover the young people. So I wanna just want to share that on this morning before I get into what God has given me on today. Amen? Amen. So uh, we wanna go to a book that I don't normally preach from, um, but this is what the Lord, where the Lord has led me this morning. I want to go to the book of Ruth this morning, the book of Ruth, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move around a little bit uh, within the book of Luke. I mean uh, Ruth. Um, so just bear with me this morning. Amen. All of us. All of us are in a different season 
Uh, we are in a season. Everybody in here is currently in a season, but we are all in a different season. A different season, but everybody's in a season. We're constantly in a season. You're in it. You're in and out of a season. God is constantly bringing us through. But this morning, about something this morning uh, from the, the subject of relationships, of relationships, of relationships. I don't think we realize how valuable relationships are today. Um, relationships are valuable and I, I want to encourage you to take notes uh, because I, I feel like God is going to have me uh, put the kickstand down on this for just a uh, for for a couple of weeks just to touch on on relationships because relationships is such a deep deep discussion it's a deep topic and so I want to I want to um, begin to pour out uh, what God has given me concerning relationships but there are three types of relationships, three types of relationships. And I'm not going to touch on all three of these relationships on today. But there's three types of relationships that um, we may not have been aware of. I know I wasn't. But there are three types of relationships that we have and that we develop over the course of our lives. Whether we know it or not, I think now we'll be able to be, we'll be able to pay uh, closer attention to these relationships and the first one is general relationships a general general relationships so that's the first one there's three types of relationships the first one is general relationships and again I'm not going to touch on all of these today because all of these really can be a sermon in themselves but I want to just give you um, just kind of give you a snippet that they're that we're going to be discussing these but it's three general uh, it's three relationships, uh, types of relationships. So that the first one is general relationships, and this is the relationships where, um, where you have um, uh, children and parents. That's general relationships, P children and parents, husband and wife. Um, this this also uh, a general relationships. You have uh, these are the relationships that you're in action with your environment every day. So so general relationships is where you, this is relationships that you're building on a consistent basis every day. You go to school, you meet people, you have friends, you go to work, you have your coworkers, that's relationships you build with your coworkers. You have, um, you have um, people that, you, you know, casual friends, maybe you go to the gym, work out, and you, maybe you see the certain people there every day. These are general relationships, okay? So we have general relationships. This is where you interact your interaction with your environment. So this is the interaction with your environment, your surrounding. That's your that's your general um, relationships. And then you have what is called seasonal relationships. So you got general relationships, and then you have seasonal relationships. Now, of course, that's pretty cut and dry. Seasonal relationships are relationships that are in they 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 come. They they you have you, you have these relationships within the season. So that means. In, in the course of seasonal relationships, everybody that's uh, that that comes along uh, in your life, some of them are seasonal, they, and and a lot of times this is very important because we tend to get attached to people and uh, gravitate to people, and when when people leave us and when people go a different direction, we our hearts are broken and we left we left feeling like an orphan we feel like we feel left abandoned and the reason being is it's not because there was something wrong with you it's because you develop you develop um you develop a relationship uh, you try to develop something that was long term with something that was sh meant to be short term so some seasonal relationships are not long-term relationships some of some of them can be but they're not meant to last forever and so you have people come in and go out. And I can tell you uh, uh, where, you, where you see a lot of seasonal relationships. Um, I, I didn't understand this until I started diving into this until I got older. When I was in high school, you know, when you're in high school, and y'all young people are listening to this for sure. When you're in high school, you meet, you know, everybody that grow up being best friends in high school. Typically, typically most, some, most cases, some cases they stay in connection with one another. Nowadays, you got social media, and so they can connect over over social media. But 
normally when you leave and you graduate, the person that used to come spend a night at the house or hang out at the house, all of a sudden you don't see them individuals no more. You you tw go 20 years and don't see them. You have a 20 year class reunion. That's the t first time you see them since you graduated from high school. And you feel like, well, why they, this is acting funny. No, they were, they're not acting funny. What we didn't understand th uh, then is that they were seasonal. So you have some seasonal relationship. And you got some that last. I mean, a lady, she got a friend right now that lives in Texas that she's close to. They, they were like this when they were in high school. And uh, now, they don't, now they don't talk every day, but they stay in contact. And so you have, you have seasonal relationship. And what we have to learn to do in the kingdom is that we need to be able to have a sharp discernment to know what are general relationships, what are seasonal relationships. That's the two I, I talked about so far. And then there's a third one, which is, and this is one of the most powerful ones. The third one is destiny and covenant relationships. Destiny and covenant relationships. So you have general relationships and you have um, seasonal relationships and then you have destiny and covenant relationships. Now, we, 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 we tie in destiny and covenant because when you're, covenant, when you're in covenant with somebody, there's a mutual agreement. There's an agreement that you made. We're in covenant. So when a husband and a wife, so I mentioned husband and wife in general. Well, really, husband and wife is a covenant relationship because you, you, a man and a woman come together. They're on the altar. And um, they're, they're reciting vows before God and the witnesses. And then after uh, they recite, recite vows, there's legal, a legal agreement when they sign the marriage certificate and the marriage license that's, that, that, that in, in, in the natural, it, it binds that contract. But, but in the spirit, spirit um, there's, a, there's also there's a covenant that comes with, on the spiritual side of this type of uh, relationship. So a husband and wife, uh, on the natural side, uh, the covenant is sealed by a license, a marriage license. But on the spiritual side, the covenant, once the, once the marriage license has been signed, the marriage is still not is still not uh, confirmed until that person, that husband and wife come together intimately. And so that's what seals it spiritually. And so that's a covenant. And so this, these are covenant destiny, destiny relationships. That's why this is so important. I'm going to talk a great deal this morning on destiny relationships. And we'll touch later on, uh, not today, but we'll, do, we'll dive more into the other two that I was just mentioning. So the three, again, is general relationships, seasonal relationships, and then destiny and covenant relationships. But I want to touch a great deal on destiny and covenant because your, your relationships success in your life. Do you know that? Your relationship will have a great deal. Who you come into contact with, who you connect with over the course of your life will have a great deal of your success. In other words, your, you listen, your relationships are like a bank account. You have to make investments into your, uh, into, your, uh, into your bank account in order to get dividends out. And so in order to get dividends out of a, 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 a fruit, out of a successful relationship, there has to be time invested into that relationship. Does that make sense? And so every relationship needs an investment. And so you don't spend time on a person. You don't get to know a person. And so none of us, as long as all of us on this earth, all of us that have the ability to inhale and exhale as a, as a human being, we need relationships. Don't let the devil fool you and tell you you need to isolate yourself in a room, close the door, pull the shades down, sit in the dark room all day long. I don't need nobody. I don't need this. You need people. Say it. Say it. I need you to say it out loud. I need people. You need people. And you know what? You can sit here and act, uh, and, and, and act slow this morning if you want to, but I'm going to help you. You need people because the things that you need done in your life, it does not get done except people help you. Hello, somebody. Yeah. So you need people. Yeah. Yes, God bless. Yes. So how does God come into the equation? If you say, we say, well, we need God. I need, all I need is God. I don't need people. You in trouble then because God used people to bless people. He used people 
to bless people. So without people in your life, you can speak, you can decree and declare all you want. But if there's no relationship you have built over the course of your life, you're going to be in trouble. And so your relationships, just like money and time, must be stewarded. You must learn this. First of all, you must learn how to discern what are good relationships and know how to dis distinguish between what is a what is a general relationship. It's just a casual relationship. Like I got I got general relationships right now. I can call people out right now in my life. They're general. Uh, they are, these are general relationships. These are relationships that that are connected to my environment. But then there's the seasonal ones where I know where you got to pay attention to because these are the ones that can deceive you. The seasonal relationship can deceive you because you can look at the, the seasonal relationship and think that it's a destiny and covenant relationship. But in actuality, it's a seasonal relationship. They only came for the, for the, first, six, for the first six months of the year that you needed them. Now they're not there. And you sit at home, you crying, you mourning, you grieving because they left you. Paul, uh, God asked Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? It's time for you to get up and go anoint the next king. Saul didn't messed up. He didn't messed up. He didn't burn his bridge. And you sit up here crying. Get the, get the oil flask and go to Jesse's house and anoint the one, the next king that I have anointed. Stop mourning over Saul. Saul. And many times our seasonal relationships, what was supposed to be a, a seasonal relationship, we mourning because that person have left us. It was their season to leave. And so we need to be able to, and this is very important, because we love hard, especially of us, us that, are, that, are, that are kingdom citizens and we have the love of God. We, we build relationships and we love hard. And when people leave, the enemy, all of, all of a sudden, he started making you question. And these are all, these are all the, uh, the signs of grief. We, we, start, we start going into denial. We start getting angry. These are all stages of grief. And so, uh, why did they leave me? Or maybe if I would have done this differently, they would have stayed. Maybe if I'd have done that differently, or maybe if I would not have said this, they would have stayed. But they weren't meant to stay. They were never meant to stay. They were only to enter your life in February and be gone in June. But you didn't know that. Because you just, you felt that's, well, this is, I got a new best friend. Be careful who you call your best friend. Because everybody is not supposed to be, uh, be your destiny covenant helper. They're only there to help. They may be, let me say it this way. They may be the connection that gets you to your covenant destiny helper. My God. Y'all following what I'm saying? So, so, so don't, be, don't be deceived that the person that is connected to your destiny helper, you getting all bent out of shape because that person gone. They were only the bridge to get you there. They knew the person that God wanted you to connect with. And now they're just done. They gone. We need in this season and in every season, the most important thing and gift we need to ask God for is discernment. Ask God to help us to discern what is good and what is acceptable in the eyes of God as it relates to relationships. Because sometimes we take this, we take this aspect of our lives for granted. Because we just feel everybody that come around, well, man, they just so nice. They look the part, they act the part, they sound the part, but that don't mean that they're meant to be there forever. They were only there to push you along. So let's go to Ruth. This is how you know. This is how you know that you are connected to somebody. And again, I told you earlier that we're going to skip around. Ruth. I'm going to read this out of the NIV, the New International Translation, okay? I'm going to begin reading at verse 16. 
All right, let, let, let's back up to verse 1, okay? Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. In the days when the judges ruled, again, I'm reading out of the NIV. In the days when the judges ruled, there, were, there was, was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. Man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of their son was uh, Mel Mel Milan, Milan and uh, Kalon. I don't know how, they say, how you say that, but we're going we're gonna to use that for the sake of the, what we're reading, okay? Yeah, we're going to roll with that. Um, they were uh, Ephraite, Ephraites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab to live there. Now, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. So listen carefully. He died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women uh, named, uh, say that, <laughs> Ophrah, <laughs> and the other, Ruth. They, and they lived there about 10 years. And then the two, I'm just going to say this, the two sons, they died. <laughs> the two sons died, and Naomi was left without two sons and her husband. Can y'all imagine that? She lost her husband, and she lost her two sons. And they had, just, they had married, and, they, and they, so, so now her two daughter-in-laws now are widows. Now let's watch, just pay attention to this. Naomi and Ruth returns to Bethlehem, so verse 6. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. With her two daughter-in-laws, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said, now listen to verse 8. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that, grant that each of you will find rest in the home of, your, of another husband. So she's speaking blessings over them now. She's telling them, y'all, 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 y'all's assignment is basically up. So I'm going to pronounce a blessing over you. But watch this. Then she kissed them goodbye and they, and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to two, two sons, would you wait until they grew up? So she really challenging them to go back home. No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And at, and, and at this, they wept aloud again. Then Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth, that's what I want you to pay attention to, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go, with, go back with her. Verse 16 is where I, re where I really wanted to get to. It says, but Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. 
Where you die, I will die. And where there is, where, and, and, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, even if even death separates you from me. When Naomi realized, pay attention in verse 18, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. She stopped urging her. Now, what I want to point out there from verse 16 through 18 was that Ruth understood in the moment that Naomi, and maybe in the moment she didn't understand that Naomi was her destiny helper, but she understood that there was something on Naomi's life that she was destined to be connected to. There's a, there comes a time in your life where you have to know and discern. That's why I told you discernment is a major key. Discern when something is on somebody's life that you are to connect with. And she said, where you go, I will go. Now, did she really know what she was saying? I don't think she really knew what she was saying in, turn, in, 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 the, in the depthness of what she was saying. I don't think she understood what she was saying when she said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die and be buried there. He said, your, God, your, people, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. But what was, the, what was Ruth connected to as it relates to Naomi? Let me help you. She was connected to a grace. There was a grace on a Naomi's life. There was an anointing on Naomi's life. A grace is, is the anointing of God was on Naomi's life. And so what Ruth was connected to was not a woman. Oh, my God. Jesus, help us today. She was not connected to a woman. She was connected to a grace. That's why destiny and covenant helpers Destiny helpers and covenant helpers, you have to understand that these are some vital, critical relationships. You don't play with these relationships. These are the relationships you spend time in prayer and you spend time fasting because the person you marry could hinder your destiny. That's why everybody that looks good in a suit and smell good in cologne or smell good in perfume and look good in high heels don't mean that's the person that has been assigned to your destiny. When you marry them, they interfere with the destiny on your life. Because even the husband and the wife that you marry have a grace on them. And so you're not marrying the person. You're marrying the grace. Oh, my God. Jesus. So she wasn't connecting to the woman, Naomi. She was connecting to the grace of on Naomi's life. Well, let me prove that to you. Let's go over to the next, uh, the next chapter. Is this blessing you? Chapter two. So here, 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 listen to this. Ruth meets, this is, here's the subtitle, Ruth meets in the grain field. Verse 1, now Naomi had a relative. Y'all listening? He had, she had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. My God. And Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. And, of course, she went on. Let's skip down to verse uh, 5. So, of course, she goes out into, into the grain, grain field and she finds herself in uh, Boaz, now let's get verse 5. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? Y'all hearing it? 
Boaz asks one of his workers, who does that young woman belong to? Destiny helpers. Because of her connection to Naomi and because the grace that she was connected to put her in the field of Boaz. Let's keep reading. Verse 9, watch the field where the men, so, so, so this will happen. So the overseer, let's go, let's read verse 6. We'll read, begin, uh, go, go to verse 6. It says, the overseer replied, she is a Moabite, the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and, and, has, and has remained here from morning till now, except for the short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Go, don't go and glean in another field. Don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. So now, not only is she... Is being connected to a grace connects you to everything that is in the benefit package because now she's protected. She's connected to Naomi, who's connected to Boaz. Now, Boaz tell her, I'm looking out for her. He wasn't making a pass at her, he wasn't trying to, trying to be a womanizer, he was just being a protector in the moment. Say, Stay here with the women that are in my field, don't go nowhere else, and you stay here and you, you glean from this field right here after the harvesters. Verse 9 Watch the, watch the field where the men are harvesting, and follow along after the women. And I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. Protection, right? That grace carried a protection. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever, whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have, have filled. That sounds like favor, don't it? So she got protection and she got favor. Come on, let's keep reading. At verse 10, at this, she bowed down with her face to the ground and asked him, why have you found such favor, mm, my God, in your eyes? Have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? You notice me, a foreigner. Because remember, she was a Moabite. You notice me, a foreigner. Why? Let's stop there for a moment. Why did he notice her? Did he notice her because she had a radiant beauty? Possibly she was beautiful. But he noticed her because she was connected to a grace. Naomi was the bridge that connected her to Boaz. Let's keep reading. Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law. Since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord. The, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Now what happens? He pronouncing a blessing over this woman. So she gleans in his field, and he pronounces a blessing. He recognized the favor. He protects her. He recognized the grace she was connected to. He said, I heard how you took care of your mother-in-law. And how you came to be with her people, a people you did not know. And he began to pronounce a blessing over her. I told you we were skipping around. Verse 19. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So this is her mother-in-law tell, mother telling her this. 
She said, blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one whose place she had been working. The name of the man I work today, I work with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. He, she added, that man is our, listen, is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. So she said, this is not just any kind of man. This man is connected in lineage and family. Let's keep reading. It's, it's, see, see, your destiny has a purpose. That's why you can't be connected to anybody because you connecting to the wrong person can interfere with what God is trying to do in the earth through you if you connect to the wrong person. Let's keep reading. I know we're reading a little bit this morning, but I got to make my point. Let's look at, let's look at um, the next chapter over. So chapter 4. So at this point, Boaz marries Ruth. But watch. See, it was custom that when Ruth husband died there was property and she was attached to that property but she had to marry to be connected to be able to regain the property and Boaz saw this and guess what Boaz married her and she had what was hers but it didn't stop there keep reading I'm not going to read it for the sake of time but keep reading chapter 4. There's only four chapters in the book of Ruth. The fourth chapter, you keep reading. They got married, <coughs> and they had a son, Obed. Now, why was that so significant, Pastor Tony? Because Obed, Sister Jasia, was Jesse's daddy. So why was that so significant, Pastor Tony, that Obed was Jesse's daddy? Jesse was David's daddy. So why is David and Jesse so important, Pastor Tony? Because Jesus, the son of the living God, had to come through a lineage through the house of David. That's why destiny Covenant relationships are important. And when you connect with the wrong person, you can interfere with a generation. And you can interfere with generations to come. Had they not followed the leading of God and connected to a grace, then they would not be, we would not be standing here having conversation today. But because of the grace she was connected to, destiny who are you connected to that is a destiny covenant that's a grace on my life that's why I tell people as the, the, the more I keep I keep bringing this up um, as I as, 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 when I when I talk to couples and people that want to date everybody's so excited they want to date they want a husband they want a wife I'm telling you I'm learning now through the word of God you better go to God and and you better ask God if you got to go on a fast whatever you better ask God who do you have for me because your destiny is connected to the person you connect with and if that person have not been ordained by God or anointed to be your spouse you in trouble You can't go off of feelings. You can't go off of looks. You can't go off of, off of, off of bank accounts. Shit, go on with the list. But is he, is he connected to a grace? Is she connected to a grace? 
Well, you know, Pastor Tony, I've been married a couple of times. I'm not here saying who's been married one and two and three times. I'm saying now that you know that you know, what you going to do? Are you praying? Because the person you marry can be a flat-out demon. And the only MO of Satan is to break you from God's destiny on your life. And you know how he does it? Through people. He used people. And you know the, the, the most dangerous thing for us within seasons is to be vulnerable. Because when you're vulnerable, he always bring you what you're missing. And you tie yourself to something that was never meant for you. It looked good. It sounded good. But it wasn't what God ordained. And let me tell you something. If God don't ordain it, he's not obligated to it. See, a lot of times, we, well, 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 God, I did this. No, I, I took this out. I did that. I took that loan out. But did God tell you to do that? And then, like, now God, I took it out, so you're going you gonna, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna to help me. Now, you stressed out because God did not tell you do it. You did it. Now, you want God to bless it. God is not obligated to bless what we were not anointed and ordained to have. We need to be careful of that. We want to we want, we want be, de be decreeing and declaring over something that's out of the will of God. Whenever we ask God for something, we need to ask God, is it in your will? Because, see, you got a will, and God got a will. Your will is always going to be on the flesh side. Your will always wants to be pleasured. Your will always want what is good, what, sm what sounds good, what smells good, what, what is good. But, the, but, but God's will will say, not now, but go through this to get to that. See, the will of God is not your will. Well, how we know this? Well, remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was getting ready to go to be crucified. And he said, in the moment, they're going to show you that Jesus was both human and divine. He said, in the moment, he, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass me. In other words, Jesus said, if it be possible, take me off of this assignment. But, it, but, but in, in the moment, the Holy Spirit convicted him. And he said, but nevertheless, not at my will. So that tells you right there that you and I have a will. He said, not at my will, but your will be done. So what is your, God, what is your will for my life as it re relates to relationships? I'm lonely. Well, if you're lonely... That's even a greater time for you to get closer to God. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you're lonely and you're telling God how lonely you are, the enemy also hear how lonely you are. And so he hear how lonely you are, and then you go to the grocery store, and he come down with his slick self, looking good, smelling good, want to pay for your gas, want to pay for your food. Because you're vulnerable because you're lonely. And all you have to understand is that, see, is that loneliness is just a moment. It's a season. It's going to pass. But stay consistent, stay faithful, stay patient. Because Boaz is around the corner. Is this helping somebody? I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm just using, relation, using that as, a, as it relates to relationship. We get caught up in the flesh side of things. I'm not leaving home. Because mama need me. And when I get ready to leave to go where I feel in my heart God told me to go. But I can't leave because I love mama too much. And because I love mama so much, I don't want to make mama sad. Because mama going to be sad because I'm leaving her. Because if I leave mama, she's going to be by herself. But you know God said go. But the devil say, but if you leave her, you're going to be a bad son. If you leave her, you're going to be a bad daughter. And then mama crying. Every time you see it, she crying. Baby, don't leave me. Stay, baby, stay. That's too far for you to go there. You don't need to go there because you don't know what's going on. You don't know nobody there. Come on, y'all. Talk to me this morning. You don't know nobody there. 
You just a baby yourself. You need to stay here so mama can rock you. But God said, go. Because see, what you don't know is, and what mama don't know is, when you go, Ruth is there. Naomi is there. What you don't know is Boaz is over there. You, you mean to tell me? Because you don't want her fin mama, she going to cry, buy her some Kleenex, love on her, come see her during Christmas, but you better go. And one thing I've learned, and you all know, have learned this, emotions come and go. We've been in, endure, may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning, mama might cry for a little. But after a while, when she see baby making it, oh, Lord. But if she just would have stayed. Friend of mine, true story. Is this blessing you? Friend of mine. The pastor's a very successful church in Baton Rouge. Very, very successful church in Baton Rouge. Started, started just like we did. But. He, he was going to Bible College, Brother Kelvin, in Atlanta, Georgia. Very successful. Worked for a Fortune 500 company, Jasia. Very successful. Made six-figure income. Very successful. Single. Single man. And he said he was in his apartment. I think it was his apartment. And he said he prayed, and God, he wanted a wife. Young man wanted a wife. He was going to Bible college. He was in. He said, I want you to go into your savings account, Brother Terry. And I want you to clean out your savings account. I can't remember how much he said he had in his savings account. But he said it was a, it was a significant amount. He said, I want you to go. He said, the Lord told him, go into your savings account, and I want you to pull all that is in your savings account out. And I want you to give it to the widows of the church. The church he was attending in Atlanta. I want you to go into your savings account, pull out the, the resources in there, and I want you to give that to all the widows in the church. Then... I want you to go back to Baton Rouge, and there, I have a wife for you. And he did just what God said. And he went back to Baton Rouge, he started a ministry, he met his wife, and five children later, in a successful ministry labor, later, he left the Fortune 500 company, went into full-time ministry, and God blessed him beyond measure. You know why? Because he was not connected to a person. He was connected to a grace. And when you're connected to a grace and not the person, see, you got to get past the person. The problem is we can't get past the person because we see the person. Because see, let me tell you something. People are going to come. They're going to stab you in the back. They're going to talk about you. They're going to drag your name through the mud. They're going to cuss you. They're going to do this and do that. They're going to do that. But if you're connected to a grace, that's what you need. Let me tell you why you need to be connected to a grace. Because grace is oil. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm making myself happy with this. Grace is oil. And so what does, what does oil do when you pull it, when you pour it from the top? It saturates everything that's under it. Oh, my God. So you, that's why you don't connect to the person. You connect to the person, but you really connect to the grace. Because the grace is what holds the oil. And that means everything that's on the, the grace that's on that person, it flows to the individual. Because see, the person you connected to, Brother Kelvin, they may not have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> see, we're looking at things, and we're looking at got two nickels, but they got the oil. Oh, my God. 
They got the oil. I want the oil. I don't need the penis. I don't need your nickels and dimes. See, if I get the oil, I'm a millionaire. If I get the oil, I got wealth in my house. If I get the oil, I got doctors and lawyers that I'm raising up. See, I didn't marry the woman. I married the oil. That's why if daddy say you was a mistake, oh, my God. That's why daddy say you was a mistake. Daddy wanted to send mama to the abortion clinic to take you out of the womb. Because the devil got into daddy because the devil saw destiny. Daddy just saw a seed that he made out of mistake. But the devil saw destiny. And the devil said, go to the clinic. I'll pay for it. I don't have no money. Go. I'll pay for it. Because I don't want the baby. Man, I don't want the baby. How you know this, Pastor Tony? Because when Jesus was born, tell me what so I can go and worship him, Herod. But the Holy Spirit in all of his brilliance says, go a different way. Because this baby you won't touch. This baby ain't got nothing to do with Mary. Because she only was the vehicle that got Jesus here. Got nothing to do with Joseph. Because he didn't even use Joseph's seed. My God. He used the Holy Ghost seed. So the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to take care of my son. So you go another way. Confuse them. Because it's not about Mary who was favored among women. It's not about Joseph. It's about the grace that was in her belly. Jesus Christ because through him come God redemptive salvation plan if we kill the baby we kill God's assignment y'all follow me this morning I gotta cut this thing off but is it blessing you stop looking at the people cause they gonna lie people lie they gonna speak in tongues on Sunday and lie tomorrow y'all know it's true because people fickle. They got they in this flesh. They're gonna lie to you tomorrow. They gonna go, they gonna sit here today and talk about you. Well, Lord, I went to church today. How was church? Patatoni was long-winded, spitting all over the place. <laughs> go right, go back at home. Sit here and, and, and disrupt the service, praying in tongues, all out of order. But go home. And, and talk about Pastor Tony. So let me say this for, I got to close this. Being a pastor in the moment. That's why, Pastor Raymond, I can't, I have to be careful who comes through the door and I connect with. I can't be your best friend. Oh, Lord. I know I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't care. I'm out there now. I can't be your best friend. I can befriend you, but I can't be your best friend because, first of all, I have to understand. I have to know that I have oil on my life. And you're not connected to Pastor Tony. You're connected to the oil that's on my life. And so you can't be casual with Pastor Tony. I'm helping somebody this morning. You got to understand there's a level of grace. And so when you know there's a level of grace, you got to be careful how you treat them, how you come at it, because that's oil. See, my pastor, Bishop Alfonso Denson, I love him dearly, but we don't go and drink coffee every day. Now, I do have the privilege and honor of sitting in his presence. And when I do, I value his time. Why? Because he has oil on his life. And his oil is very valuable. And so when I go, I honor the oil on his life. And when I go into his presence, I'm sitting as a student to listen because he brings wisdom. And so I don't go there saying, what's up, homeboy? Come on. What's, what's up, homeboy? Because that's not the grace on his life. We don't have that kind of relationship. 
But I go there and say, God bless you, Bishop. Can I help you? Can I serve you? Why? Because I'm serving the grace on his life. Not the man, the grace. Why, why is that important, Pastor Tony? Because if you want God to bless you, you got to honor God. And if he sent a servant in your life, that's not your, you don't, you're not me and buddy, buddy with him. So that's why I have to know how to decipher. I love you, but I got to pass to you. And see, the problem that most people fall, they get, and pastors fall into this realm because they don't understand this. They get connect so close to their people that when they error, they can't correct them. They can't correct them because they befriended them. And then they're not looking at you now as a pastor. They're looking at you, you my friend. You just hurt my feelings. No, baby, I'm not your friend. Never been your friend. I'm your pastor. I'm here to cover you. I'm here to feed you with knowledge and understanding. I'm not here to go take your clothes to the wash area and eat beignets all day. There's nothing wrong with going to eat a beignet with you. But I'm, I got, when it's time for me to correct you, don't be a baby in the, in the corner throwing a fit. Well, I thought we were friends. That's where you're wrong. I've always been your pastor. That's why as a parent, you can be friend and parent. You can befriend them and love them. But when it's time to correct them, well, mama, I thought you were my friend. No, I'm your mama. No, I'm your daddy. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Understand relationships. Understand covenant. Understand graces. And respect the grace. See, Lady T, we've been married 19 years, as I stated earlier. And Pastor Smith and Sister Smith can vouch for this, can attest to this as well, because they because he's a man of God with oil on his life. You go to their house, I can I can I can I can I'm a witness of this. You go to his house, she treat she 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 don't just treat him because that's her husband. Whether she knew this or not, she's blessing a grace on his life. She's serving the grace on his life. And because she served the grace on his life, then God turned around and blessed her. See how that worked? But if he, she come in and she running him down the ground, vice versa, God don't bless you because there's no honor there. There's no respect there. And so, therefore, God is not obligated to bless that. He don't bless mess. Y'all heard me? He don't bless mess and he don't bless chaos. He bless order. order. You get back in order. And you get under the blessing umbrella. When you get out of order, you are, you are an, un, from under the blessing umbrella. And therefore, God is not obligated to, to take care of you because you're no longer under his protection. Grace. As I was talking about Lady T and I, we in the house, yes, we husband and wife. Yes, we understand that we have, we have, we have fun. But she also knows when there's the grace side of me that she realized that's God. And there's a respect. You got to know, you need discernment. I can't stress that enough to you today. You need discernment. Could it be that we're not connected to the right people? Could it be we're dishonoring a grace? Be very careful. Be very careful. I pay attention to graces on people's lives. And there's times I go to my pastor's house. And Sister Soraya, I walk up to him, and I get out of the car, and I give him an envelope with some money in it. Not because, like, I'm a show pastor. No, I do it because God see all the grace on his life. Because guess what? If you honor the grace on his life, God going to honor what's on your life and bless what's on your life. So I want you all to remember this. 
you are connected not to Glory Gatherings Ministries. That's the name. What are you connected to? Oil. Well, it's not still. We come to church every Sunday and give all these black empty chairs. So what? You collected to oil. I want the oil. But Kevin, I want the oil. Why, why, Elijah? Elijah, Elijah, why you follow Elijah? He, he didn't say this in scripture. I'm paraphrasing. This is my version. He want the oil. Why did Peter, James, John, and all of them follow Jesus? He want the oil. So what do you want? But I just told you, they may have two, may, may not have two niggas to rub together, but they got oil. I want to pray for you. Did this bless you this morning? I had, I gotta, I gotta stop because I'm going out and been long with this boy. Listen, I know those that are online. I hope you've been blessed by this. This one of the messages y'all need to go back this week and listen to, because I'm gonna go back and listen to it. Because it's blessing me. Oil is what you want. Say it. I want the oil. oil. Come on, say it again. I want the oil. oil. You want the oil? You want the oil, Jasia. Because everything else out there, baby, look good. Now, I want to go over there across the tracks. Because they got the most awesome youth. Do backwards flips when they get their offering. I'm going over there. <laughs> but what you found out when you got over there, the barrel was sap dry with no oil. So you mean to tell me you left the people that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? The little few people that's here that love each other went over there and the barrel was dry. Because you wanted to be. Everybody know where the oil is. When they get to the oil, they realize it's oil there. And because the oil there, I'm going to stay there. I want everybody to come to the altar. I feel compelled to pray for you this morning. My God. Let's come to the altar. I know there's those on the online just... Stay where you are. You can stand where you are. Sit where you are. We're going to pray for you. Come on. I want you. I don't want you. Y'all can come a little closer. I ain't going to bite. So here, here's, here's, here's why this is so important in this season. Because we, again, we have a tendency. Help me, Holy Ghost. We have a tendency to make decisions with our eyes, natural eyes. So your natural eyes tell you, I like what I see. But the oil, is the oil there? Is the oil there? Stop being deceived by what you see. Do you know I stand up here Sunday after Sunday? And I see all of these black chairs. And it's easy for the enemy to say, you ain't doing something right. That's why they ain't coming. That's why the church ain't full. You know what you got to tell him? Shut up. That's right, Brother Terry. Get out of my face. Because nothing you say is the truth. Y'all, do y'all know everything he say is a lie? That, the Bible says he's the father of lies. Do you know what the father means? Let me tell you what it meant when he said the father of lies. The Bible was talking about, not, well, he's not saying, well, but Jesus is the father to every liar. Uh, the devil is the father to every liar. That's not what he's saying. Father in the Greek means pater, means source. So the devil is the source of lies. And so everything he tell you is a lie. So, well, you're just lonely. 
what do the lonely do at Christmas? <laughs> Lord help us, Jesus. I got a revelation. What do the lonely do at Christmas? No. He goes, he'll do that kind of stuff. But God said he'll be whatever you need him to be in your life. Amen. So I, I want to speak and pray for you this morning that you stay connected to the oil, not the person. And not just with ministry, every relationship in your life. And that we understand in the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going we gonna to do a deep dive on what is general relationships, seasonal relationships, and we're going to touch some more on this. Because when it's all said and done, you're going to have to let some people go. Because you're going to find out they were more of a hindrance than a help. And they weren't meant to be a destiny helper. So, Father, we ask you this, this morning, what an on-time word. And the oil is what we're after. The oil is what we're after. Help us to recognize oil. Oil is processed. And so God, the olive was pressed. It was pressed for the oil to flow. And so, God, we, we know that the oil is connected to the ministry. But also, there are, there are people that is carrying the oil. Help us to be watchful, vigilant, prayerful. And ask you, are they carrying the oil? I'm asking you, God. To open my eyes. Come on, ask God to open your eyes. Because, see, you can't trust yourself in this. God, open my eyes. You open my eyes. And show me where the oil is. Open my ears so that I can hear you when you say go. That's where it is. Open my heart to receive those instructions even when my flesh tells me no. Oh my God. Because the oil is what I'm after. Just as it wasn't about Naomi. It wasn't about Ruth. It wasn't about even Boaz. It was about Jesus. Oh my God. Hey, she do no she kind of my yoko. It was about Jesus. But they were, they were carrying the oil. And so God, who's carrying my oil? <laughs> That's who I'm connecting with. Now let me stop there for a moment. I want you to open your eyes and look at me for a moment. There could be multiple people carrying oil. And it's almost like they're passing the baton. So you need to be vigilant and prayerful. Because somebody's carrying oil. And that oil got you to the next person. And to the next person. Naomi had oil. She passed the baton over to Boaz. Boaz had oil. And then... Him together with Ruth had oil and hit Obed. And then Obed had oil and here come Jesse. And then who had the oil? Jesse, then he gives it to David. And it all led to Jesus. But they were all oil carriers. You, why am I saying that? It's the Lord, you're carrying somebody's oil. Pastor Smith, you're carrying somebody's oil. There's people that have not connected to you yet, but you got the oil. Soraya, you're carrying somebody's oil. 
Well, I'm only 13. But you're carrying the oil. Mason don't want to be on the altar this morning. But Sister Sharon, he carrying somebody oil. We thank you for the grace on the lives of your people. This is what I want you to do in the next few moments. I know our time has felt far spent. I want you to lock arms with the person just like this. That's it. Lock arms with the person. This is prophetic what we're about to do. <laughs> yes. That's it. There you go, Jasia. Sister, Sister Smith. We don't, we want, we uh, connect with one of them too. I want to make sure everything, we want this thing connected. Now this is prophetic that you are connecting to oil. Okay. So we do this as a, it's, this is symbolic for, it's for, for the prophecy that we're speaking. That from this day forward, you're going after the oil. And as you go after the oil, you're going to lock arms with that individual. And that's going to be a covenant-keeping person. And you're going to know that this is your person because of what's on their life. You're not going after the person. You're going after the oil. Father, as we connect this morning, this is a sign that we are connecting to oil. And we know oil represents the anointing. Ooh, my God. And the anointing represents empowerment. The anointing rep represents open doors. The anointing represents the abundant blessings. So we are connecting to the oil. Because when the oil flows, it covers everything that is under the oil. It flows from the top down. When the oil was poured on Aaron's head, the Bible said that the oil flowed down to his beard. Ooh, my God. And so when the oil flows, everything flows down and it soaks up everything in its presence. We're going after oil. We're not going after <laughs> wealth. We're not going after the person. We're not going after fame. We're going after And God, it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. And whatever the Lord telling you to put us to give, I'm not telling you a significant amount to give. Lady T, I normally give for, uh, for us, but you give your seed this morning. An oil seed. Young people, get a, get a seed. If you don't have one, see your parent. A seed. Oil seed. I want you to labor it. Oil seed. I know this was, was lengthy this morning, but it was necessary. Oil seed. Oil seed. Let me get my phone out. Oil seed. Glory to God. Oil seed. Come on. Oil seed. Ikarabasote. Yanamashiki. Rabaku. I feel the anointing. Oil seed. I want you to leave out of here today talking about it. Oil seed. I'm going after the oil. Let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, oil seed. There's no, unless God is speaking to you right now to give a specific amount. You give what the Lord put in your heart to give and, and, and name it. Let's 
注意到，係啦。And for some face. All your seed, Amen. Father, we thank you for the seed of every sower in the room. Your word says you give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. And God, the ground that we're standing on is holy ground. But more importantly, the seed that is sown is kingdom seed. And what we're sowing is into is kingdom ground. Therefore, because we're sowing into kingdom ground, the ground is fertile. And because it is fertile, it is due and sure to bring a harvest. And so, therefore, the oil seed represents the oil connecting to the oil. And because the seed has been sown from this day forward and not many days from now, they will be connected to the oil. And may it continually flow in their lives from hence now and forevermore. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen. We have any announcements? I know we had a, a finance meeting for the finance team right after. I know we were, like, again, I know we were long this morning. I was long this morning, but it was necessary. Amen. Amen. Any? joining our service on today we hope that you were blessed by the word that you've heard thank you so much for choosing glory gatherings ministry to share with us in, in service on this morning and we just want to speak blessings over your week and, and blessings over your family yes. and just remind you that there are three ways that you can give you can give uh, through electronically through givelify or cash app or you can also mail in your gift yes. But we speak blessings over your family, from our family to your family. Have an amazing week, and we're excited about seeing you right here.